Tafsir Tabari, but only only part of it is translated in English. So unless you have a very good knowledge of Arabic language, you don't. Okay, so he couldn't have been from there. Um, Ibn Kathir is available, but he doesn't mention any of these things that you say that you tend to watch to rape. So you cannot be from there. Baidawi, as far as I know, part of his translated cannot be from there. Zamakhshari, likewise, coming from there. Ar Razi, not from there. So I can give you, I can give you all of these names, and you won't find anything that you say you have read is from there. So it cannot be from our primary material. The response by the Muslims, you've read from. Which, which, which scholarly um, academic sources have you read? You've got me. I cannot cite my sources. So, you see, when somebody is convinced, our conviction must come from based on knowledge rather than emotion. I can cry at, like some people do in the, in the you're a passionate individual, you know what, may God make you a strong person and may God guide you to Islam and make you even stronger. Um, but these are our emotional basis for accepting something, right? We have to have an intellectual basis. So rejecting the truth has to be done with, with, with evidence. Right. right. So, for example, if we say the example of so many versions of the Quran you came to know, right? Um, is it possible that you've read this again um, in, in a thunder films, YouTube videos of videos from Speaker's Corner? Um, so, so, okay, good, very good. So where have you read them? Because I'm very much into this subject. Um, you know, I have examined it in depth. Um, so, which material sources have you come to know about these things? Well, um, I apologize because you're right. I should not rely on emotion here. I should rely on scholarly articles mm -hmm. and I should rely on, on real people who have studied what they've studied. And I apologize for, for making it seem like I, um, like I have studied because I haven't. You're right. Um, so what, what person, led you then? What the did you study? The one person that I, can, I, can, I remember their name um, because I, I, I was able to read it in English um, and, and he has a, a, a little bit more uh, That's also like Amer America, like Americanized name. Yeah. Um, Nabil Qureshi. I'm sure you've heard of him. Who was a friend of David, David Wood once. They were working together yes. uh -huh. and then he left with his own apologetic ministries. So the material, obviously the same material that I'm talking about. Now, these are materials by Christian apologists to respond to Muslims, right? So well, it's it, was written, it was written by Nabil Qureshi himself depicting Nabil Qureshi, the history of faith, correct? Nabil Qureshi is just like another, if I say for example, have you heard of a Muslim apologist for say Sabir Ali, right? Or have you heard of Muslim apologist called Adnan Rashid? Yes. The, yeah, okay, fine. So these are Muslims, right? Going to tell you about Islam and also respond to Christianity. So to learn about Christianity, are you gonna go to Shabir Ali and Adnan Rashid, for example? What? To learn about Christianity, the Christian argument and the You're Christian right. response? I shouldn't learn about, I shouldn't learn about I shouldn't learn about Islam from a Christian and I shouldn't learn about Christianity from a Muslim. Yeah, I'm not right. saying Shabir Ali and Adnan Rashid haven't done very good works on this. In fact, they have very good materials that are produced for both sides of, 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 of the people, for Muslims yeah. and non-Muslims alike and Christians. Yeah. I, I can't multiple versions. Okay, multiple say? versions of the Quran. Uh, no, I don't believe. I don't believe that the Quran that you have now. Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. that all Muslims uh, agree currently on what the Quran, what they what they believe is the canon Quran. However, um, when I, is this belief from? Huh? Is this belief only decided today, um, five years ago, by the United Muslims of um, no, the world? It's from a long time. How long? Um, was your first? It was the first consolidation. Was after? What's his name? I'm so sorry. Part of it is because I don't speak Arabic, and I and it's very difficult for me to remember Arabic words and names. Um, so I don't know remember the name, but I know it's over a thousand years. This this belief is the collective consensus of all the Muslims around the world. There is only one Quran that the Prophet ﷺ left behind, and this Quran has been read, is read, being read all over the world by the Muslims. So even though there might be slight differences because the Quran was transmitted by the Prophet from God in multiple readings. So to give an example, Maliki Yawmiddin and Maliki Yawmiddin. There's a difference. But these, both of the differences are from God. 
Muslims all alike agree on that. So when we say there is only one Quran and you say there's multiple versions of the Quran, you're going, you'll be going against the consensus of the Muslim body of general Muslims, scholarly Muslims, consensus all along the history from day one to today. Yes, right? I understand that. So, um, sir, I, I, my problem is not with Muslims. My problem is not with the Islamic nation. My problem is not with you. Is it with my, Islam and the Quran? My problem is with the accuracy of the Quran in terms of history. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So the Quran claims it's a revelation from God. Yes. The same God that revealed to Moses the prophet, Jesus the prophet, and other prophets. Peace be upon them all. Yes. So the Quran claims that. It's the same God that has revealed revelations before and has now revealed the final revelation to Prophet Muhammad. So when you want to talk about the accuracy, what do you have in mind that the Quran is inaccurate about? Well, um, it, it uh, says that the war um, reclaiming Saudi Arabia when he was, or uh, Mecca when he was, not Mecca, oh my goodness. Um, the cube, the, 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 the Kaaba? The Kaaba, yes. I am. What does the Quran say about it? Um, I believe the Quran says that it was a that it was a war of that it was a war of defense to reclaim it to reclaim it for the one God, correct? And carry on anyway. I don't know why he says that. So okay. Um, so well, please correct me. So, so what, what exactly is? It? That you know much more about no, 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 no. no. Um, As we expect, Muslims should know about the Quran. Christians should know about the Bible. Okay, this is a given thing. It should be right. Yeah. Otherwise, what what kind of believers are we if we don't know the basics of our of our religion? of our scripture. So what an example of inaccuracy is it that you were trying to put forward? What, what I was able to read from uh, historians and archaeologists mm -hmm. was that the, the wars that were enacted by Muhammad um, were, were very violent and that, they, and that although he was a leader of a nation and necessi can't necessarily be blamed for violence, he did have a war of conquest and that is, it is, it is contradictory with what it claims in the Quran. And so I was... How I is it contradictory in the Quran? The Quran says that it was a war of peace and that Why does it say that? It doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that it's a war, is, war, it is a war of peace. Okay, then I am wrong. Sure. So let's take about another example of inaccuracies that you may have in mind. That, because if something has convinced you away from Islam, there has to be really issues which were really doubtful and then you were convinced away from it to something else. So. Um, okay. Um, some other examples. Uh, one of the arguments for the validity of the Quran was uh, was scientific scientific examples of um, an, uh, of, of uh, knowledge that couldn't have been known at that time, but it, since it had been revealed from God, um, then it must be uh, divinely inspired knowledge and must not come from man because man couldn't have known that particular scientific fact. Is that that's that's a that's a common argument for the validity of a text being divine? Right? No, this is an argument a lot of Muslims um, make. Yes. Yeah, but that, um, is that, lots of Christians make is that, similar is that the Quran says though. Um, no, the, well, I, I'm, I'm getting to that. The Quran makes a claim about uh, the nature of conception and where, um, and where. Uh, are you familiar with this? I, I, uh, this argument for the validity of the Quran is that uh, in Surah number 23. Is it? Thank you. Um, Suratul Mu'minun. Yes. Um, uh, there is a description. <laughs> okay, can I? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I, I'm a part of a class and I, and I have a limited amount of time here. Everyone else left. Take your time. It's very enjoying discussion. We're hanging with you. They will stay a little bit longer. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank they you. They will stay longer because it's an interesting discussion. Yes. Um, and I was examined, and I was, I rejoiced in that argument because I think that that's very convincing. Um, but uh, when I read it for myself, uh, and, and I gotta admit, I had to translate it to English. So mm -hmm. No problem. Um, and, uh, but I didn't find that that particular, uh, that particular argument convincing. What was that? The, um, the argument that the Quran had pre-biological knowledge of the nature, biological nature of conception and birth, of where sperm comes from. It said sperm comes from from somewhere uh, in the spine, rather, you know what I mean? Um, uh, no, it doesn't. Um, anyway, so I do know what I mean. Yeah. So, so this is an argument, and Nabil Qureshi made a video. I, I, I used to watch his as well. Um, uh, poor fellow. Who made a video? Nabil Qureshi once made a video on this issue, about the very issues about sperm. I, I haven't, yeah, yeah. So you haven't you haven't probably read uh, or looked I, at his I've, I've read I've read yeah. his essays, uh, but sure, I have sure, not sure. watched his videos. Um, unfortunately, for him, even as a medical doctor, I mean, he should have realized the Quran doesn't make that argument. Um, so what the Quran says is not like the sperm comes from between the backbone and the ribs. 
it talks about how the two arguments are made, how man emanates from these two places. So when you look at the, let me simplify it. When you look at during birth, the child in the, the, the abdomen or the womb of, of the mother is actually in between, exactly in between these two structural places. Because when you have a, like a cylinder, we, our reference point are, if you have a cylinder, what's our reference point? It's like from this perspective, from the center. The center and yeah, then the radius. So, yeah. No, no, no. From front to back, from this angle. Oh, the diameter. Okay. No, no, no. The front to the back, anterior and posterior. In medical terms, this is what we would use to say this is anterior to this organ, posterior to this organ, in front of or in back of, so that in a cylinder you can pinpoint its, its position. So the baby indeed comes from between the backbone and the ribs, because that's where it's coming from, anterior and posterior. So the Quran hasn't made any scientific error of any kind or any sort. Um, and what it does in the beginning, it does show something very interesting that this sperm actually it doesn't talk about sperm only it talks about uh, which is a gushing fluid which is self-emitting and what we know now within this gushing fluid this sperm is self-motile so that's something that you have to say the Greeks and the Romans and the Hindus known, would not have known so you would say that this is certainly interesting because the in Arabic I'm not going to go into the grammar but very simply the saying you would have normally said ma'un madfuq. Yeah, ma'un madfuq. But the Quran says... In English that means something very yeah. different. But, but, yes. it, it, but it says ma'un dafiq, means the, the water itself is doing it itself motion, self-emitting motion. So not only this is something that we wouldn't have known, and it's very precise today, yeah. and there is no error in the description of the Quran when it comes to the birth of uh, the child. So um, have you heard of a person called Jonathan McClatchy? Okay, he came here again, again, now doing a PhD of some kind. Um, I very much wanted to discuss this because it's interesting to have a discussion with someone who, who are man or woman of knowledge in that very field. Like if Nabil Qureshi was well today, I would have had the same discussion with him rather than someone who's not in the medical field. Right? Could you, could you actually, um, could you so, give me the names of? I, I'd, I'd like to do. I have to leave, but I'd like to do further research on this. And you, and you were citing no, what, what, a lot of. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. We will, we will towards the end. But I want to know what other things that intellectually really led, led you away. So what are the things that you found in the Quran that is really not quite right? Um, well, yeah, yeah, because you mentioned, remember, a lot of points. So I want to pick from those points and tell me, okay, okay, I mentioned this, this is why. Unfortunately, because what I will give you an argument and then I believe that you're, and then it will be your turn to, um, to, defend, to defend against the argument. But unfortunately, I have to go. And so rather than give you another argument, can no, you no, no, another argument. The same arguments that you've made already, okay. just because I don't want to go through every single one of them and I don't remember all of them because my memory isn't that good. That's why I use okay. notepad like yourself exactly. Yeah, um, so yes. remind yourself and say what are the things that you said that was really, that really, you know, convinced you out of Islam? Um, okay. Um, Islam uh, is uh, sponsors a works-based gospel. Islam um, is? A works-based salvation. Not really. Um, the fact that you, uh, that in order to go to heaven, that it is your deeds and it is your following of the law that determines whether or not you are a good person. Actually, and it believes that people can be made good if they do good deeds. Okay. Do you know, do you know, just to understand, the Islamic position on this. Yes, sir. I do want to understand. No, I want to. I want to. No, no, no. So My I sister. Have to, I have to. I have to leave. You I'm leave, sorry. but I want to respond to this very quickly because okay. there's a statement of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Well, I'm when, so sorry. We're going to be late. But can I, really I make this response in one minute? I can't. I didn't one minute. Want to start it. I'm sorry. Just one minute. And the, okay. The response is this anyway. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked about, you know, you know, how are we going to do? We go to paradise with our deeds. He says no. He says. Uh, just paraphrasing, not even you, says no, not even me, unless Allah showers His grace on me, His mercy and grace on me. So, so we go to paradise through the fadl of Allah, from the grace of Allah, uh, from the mercy of Allah, not because of our deeds. So this is again total misconception by our Christian um, uh, friends in humanity. Um, unfortunately, they have to go, but uh, if we did continue, you'd have realized point by point, every single uh, reasons they may have had against Islam and accepting Islam are actually very weak and not even valid at all. But obviously now I'm just speaking to myself, there's no point in it further to continue.
of the faith without deeds is useless. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, it is not. Um, it, it, it is not uncommon that when you see a conversation like this uh, becoming interesting, that people have to go for obvious reasons. Um, they have meetings. Uh, you know, maybe another time. God willing, um, we'll continue the discussion. Uh, despite her having weak points, always look for the good um, thing in life. Despite her misconception, Aziz does said her statements were she was here and she was learning from him and she was willing to actually be corrected. No one wants to be corrected. Once you're so deep into your religion, no one wants to be corrected. And I I always clap for the people that want to be corrected and she stayed to listen to him I think for over 30 minutes so it's very very interesting did they ever pick up this conversation did she ever come back to this speaker's corner let me know and if you've got any comments feel free to say whatever you have to say in the comments below we love positive and good comments not negative ones this is not the channel for that make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video